Hello! This is Chaos Blue, and welcome to the Realm 9B and 9C Week 2 Monocap Recap. Uh, mono, because I'm the only one here, uh, at Gengar's work schedule, it makes him unavailable this week. And Nose Dice's computer broke. So, here we are. Uh, we're gonna get right into things, but before we do, there is something that I feel is fairly important I should point out. Uh, unfortunately, Division 9B has had two players drop in the past week. Uh, specifically, the Mean Green Boys and the Tanarak Tyrants have both dropped. So if you're playing against them, those are now admin games for the moment. Uh... The division has lost a fair number of teams, so hopefully we will get some replacements. But uh, for now, this is where we are. With that being said, let's look at the matches from week two. Uh, admin game. Not an admin game. The Hostors home wreckers playing against the elements of style. Chaos Dwarves beat Wood Elves. Go! And they do it by just murdering their way through, it would seem. Although, worth saying, they didn't actually get that... They didn't actually inflict uh, that... Okay. Uh, ten casualties sustained? There's only... There's only four here. Did the Elements of Styles really self-inflict six casualties? That's... that's kind of impressive, actually. Hmm. Well, here we are, I guess. Um, that happened. Uh... Okay, so... Wow. Just wow. And in hardly any... Well, I guess, yeah, it would be hardly any blocks because they did it themselves and they just pitch cleared themselves, basically. Uh, okay, then. Uh, in terms of notable things that came out of this game, other than just Miss Day losing in the first place, um, no real interesting level ups, but uh, the Tree Man on the Elements of Style took a movement bust. He has not been fired yet. But I would not be surprised if he became fired pretty quickly. Because a movement one tree is just a huge liability. Moving on. We have uh, Bounce Castle Enthusiasts versus the Rotterhood. And Nurgle wins against Kislev. But you know what? They still won. It's great. Uh, 11 armor breaks to 5. 27 blocks to 47. 5 KOs, no injuries. Uh, well, there's one casualty, which I guess was self-inflicted. Maybe a foul, actually, to be fair. It didn't produce SVP in any case. Uh, yeah. That was that game. Next up, uh, this is an admin game. This is an admin game. This is an admin game. <sighs> and this is not an admin game. This is amazing. The Gad Stoppers! 1-1-0 one, one against the Pananimals. I actually, I actually watched this game earlier today. And I, while it's still up in the system, I highly chance... Er, I highly advise everyone who's remotely interested in Stunty to watch it. I'm not saying this because Raven Poe does amazing, and it's great that he won here, but no, I'm saying this because this was a pretty brutal game. <laughs> like, the elves nearly get pitch cleared twice, and the goblins do not have- but despite that, the goblins seriously do not have the dice going their way. They really won this game off of a single good uh, almost perfect bomb throw. And I think that if you're inter serious about playing Stunty, that is an important lesson to take away from here. Winning this required Rimbo to be to be tenacious. He didn't need a lot of good luck to do it. 
but he needed great luck at the exact moment where it counted. So, uh, yeah. That is sort of my takeaway here. 17 armor breaks to 4. <laughs> yep, when goblins outbash you, then you know that you're going to have trouble. Um, I think all of these KOs were in the first half, then two-thirds of them came back in the second half. Yeah. Four casualties sustained, though. Mostly in the second half. And a goblin died. Yep. But yeah. If you're interested in playing Stunty, once again, watch this game. It is a good game to watch. It is a good teaching game for people who want to take play Stunty to help them uh, to like get a good appreciation for what it me looks like to win um, without just having all of the good luck. Because any, any team can just completely dice their opponent occasionally, but with Stunty, it takes a little bit more than that. Or at least... <clears throat> or I guess that's not really true. It doesn't take more than that with Stunty, but you can do it with a little bit less than that, I suppose. Uh, in any case, those were the games from this week. A lot of admin games. It, it sucks, but again, hopefully, hopefully we'll get some fresh blood in there. Um, as for the team I want to look at this week, that would be none other than, let's see if I can find it, <clears throat> the Hostors Homewreckers, Chaos Dwarves. So, uh, yeah, there are two guard Chaos Dwarves, which I think is the right number. At this point, you want to start taking Mighty Blow on level ups on your blockers. What is missing this game? It's not a huge deal. Or actually, it's an Agibus. It's still not a big deal. It's a it's a Chaos Dwarf. No one cares. There are the two bulls. What Both have block. One has sure hands. So we have a bull carry. We have a dirty player on a hobgoblin, which is, you know, essential. Really. <laughs> and we have the one leveled up player who... Normally, I would ignore, but I actually want to give some advice here. I don't know what Randomus, Max, Randomus Namus is thinking for this player, but I highly recommend taking Kick. Or if you don't like Kick, Wrestle. Uh, actually, you know what? Forget Kick. Go with Wrestle. Because, uh, okay, the Kick logic... I like Kick on Chaos Wars because your bulls can really pressure a close kick. Plus, if you're playing against a slow team, then it's always good to have kick against a slow team. Because they kick into a back corner, and then they're... <clears throat> and then you can slow the drive down one turn just by doing that. Uh, but no. It's good because you can use kick to pressure with your bulls. Uh, but having said that, I think that would be a lot better once one of them has break tackle. So until then, probably I would go with Wrestle. And there are two simple reasons for that. First of all, you have plenty of block already, so having some Wrestle helps to balance out your team. And second of all, critically, you can use Wrestle to set up fouls. Uh, lots of money in the bank. Really? Eh. Like, a lot of money in the bank. So I am kind of expecting to see the level 2 stadium before the next game. Which sets you up, puts you well on the way towards getting the Stadium Enhancement, which you have a few options for. Bribe Stadium might be tempting. I'm going to say go with Nuffles Altar. Um, it's not as good for Chaos Dwarves as it is for regular Dwarves, but you can still get... Uh, I'm pretty sure you can get... Uh, what's his name? The uh, I'm pretty sure you can get Boomer. Like Dribblesnot. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can get Dribble Snot as Chaos Wars for 10k. And you also have a Strength 4 player uh, with, that you can get for 30k, I think, with the Nuffles Altar. So I do highly recommend it. But if you don't want to get into the that game, if you don't like the idea of giving people other people cheap star players, then probably you just want to go with the Bribe Stadium. Um... Yeah. Yeah. 
that was... I didn't really have much else to add to this, to be honest. Um... Not yet, anyway. <clears throat> and, uh, I realize that I'm only ten minutes into this video, but, unfortunately, there's just... no freaking matches to talk about. So, um... I guess we'll move on to a place where there are some matches to talk about. A place like... Oh, I still have this level of 5C in my... Whoops! <laughs> uh, so... Uh, B lost a team, but C gained a team, which we will be talking about when we get to them. But, uh, just for reference, it is this team, Dead Presidents, coached by, by Lazarus. It is undead. Again. So, uh, yeah, this division is only, is at 13 and 14 now, which is pretty nice. Let's look at the matches. First match, the Dead Prez Dead Presidents take their first match 2-1 over the Flat Earthers with a ton of armor breaks. Um, 51 blocks against 21, that is really uneven. I guess it is ogres. I guess it is ogres. Uh, lots of running yards. Not actually that many casualties inflicted. Uh, I don't... Th hmm. I don't think there were any cool level-ups from here. Although, maybe I forgot to write it down. Actually. You know, we'll worry about that later. Uh, what did happen in this game is that the Dead Prez injured... Seriously, I just wrote injured white... I don't even know how the damn thing was injured, okay? There were, oh, hey, it was this team after all. They rolled doubles and got dodge on a white, which is pretty cool. They also apparently injured a white, but man, I don't know. My notes are garbage, apparently. <laughs> Next up, we have Crawdad Zydeco Experience versus Wood United, where the Humies win 1-0 against the Elves. Seemingly by outbashing them, but also I noticed that they got not one, but two interceptions. So, uh, yeah, probably this is why the elves did not score. Um, seems like a safe bet. Lots of KOs, a few injuries inflicted. Seriously, two interceptions, that's insane. Uh, lots of SVP. Well, yeah, you get that when you get constant interceptions. And one of their blitzers, probably this guy. Yep, it's that guy. Rolled plus movement. Next up, we have Economies of Scale versus Nerves. And Lizardmen beat Undead. This was uh, Undead out blocks Lizardmen. That's actually a little bit surprising. But... The bashing is not especially effective for either team. Nerves have a lot of running errors, actually, so it looks like they came close to scoring and a ton of ball possession. A kind of scale might have even, like, like, this is like a two-turner right here. So Nerves controlled the ball for most of, seemingly controlled the ball for most of the game, but failed to actually score a touchdown at the end. Uh, and I mean, sometimes that just happens. Sometimes it just happens. If it happens to elves, it can sure happen to undead as well. Hmm. After that, we have Dwarfs of Duncan versus Mystery Science Goats 3000, and the dwar the Chaos Dwarves, rather, beat the Chaos Team. Uh, again, no real interesting injuries or level ups that I've seen, but, uh, this was just a huge bash fest, as you would expect from Chaos Wars and Chaos, respectively. A few KOs, a few injuries, the Chaos slightly outbashed the Dwarves, but the Dwarves got twice as many armor breaks and one more removal. And, uh, I think it's clear, I think, I think it's clear that that worked out for them. Oh, hey, Chaos did pull off a pass, though. That's something. 
next we have the Rockin' Sockums versus Red Runt Rage. And I watched this, I watched about half of this game when it was playing. And this, unlike the other stunty game, where it could have honestly gone either way, and it was a rough game for Negative Pro, but he pulled it out with some pure stunty bullshit at exactly the right time. This game was absolutely brutal for the Rock and Sockums. Like, I know that uh, Dwigs was feeling a little down about it, but man, don't worry about it. Everyone gets diced occasionally. It's just... It's just she got diced by halflings. <laughs> I mean, it happens. Most halfling... Most stunty wins are from dicing people like this, and stunty still wins about 30% of their games. Halflings have a 30% win rate, which they do by dicing people. So it's not the... It, it sucks, but it doesn't really reflect bad on you. Uh, having said that, though, I am super happy to see that Halflings did win. Because I love seeing stunty wins. And uh, seriously, though, um, yeah, it, it's not hard to see why they won. They have better ball possession. They have, uh, actually they didn't, they, uh, they did sustain more removals, but not significantly more. Like this is five to nine, which sounds like a big deal, but for, for Stunty against an 11, a roster, 11 player, like there are 14 players on this team, right? I guess 15 with Deep Root, probably. There's at least 14 players on this team. And there's 11 players on this team. So this puts you down to 6, and this puts you down to also about 6. Except by that point, Halflings might have a strength advantage because they have all their trees. But, uh, yeah, like, this was a really brutal max match for you, Dwigs. I hope you didn't get discouraged by it. But I'm ha really happy to see... Uh, scam bammer win and I really hope they just do this to every team they play against I would love that so much and uh, and hey you did you did get a lot of SVP from the SVP pinatas so there's that next up we have the admin the single admin game and then all orcs no play versus dauntless unicorns which was a 2-0 win for the Orcs against the... This is Pro Elves, right? Looks like a Pro Elf. <laughs> so, three passes, one death, one expulsion. Oh, wow, the Elves were doing some fouling. I approve. Uh, 13 armor breaks. One injury and one kill, and two KOs versus one KO. 25% more blocks than the elves. Yeah, like this feels like this feels like the orcs outbashed the elves, but not like by a huge amount. I think it's I did not watch this game, but I feel like the elves like this kill might have come early in the game and the elves might have gone on tilt a little bit. Uh that's sort of my impression from it anyway. Uh, certainly the orcs have much better ball possession, so uh, whatever happened, the elves were struggling to hold on to the ball. Uh, they didn't score, so probably that means they got sacked early on. Uh, maybe they were on offense first, and then I could see that turning into a game like this. Yeah. Then elves just can't really break through an orc cage. If it's close enough to score, it's going to score. Okay, then. On that note, I'm going to look at one team here as well. And that will be... None other than Dead Presidents! Because they're the new team and they didn't get in the, the pre-cap. Uh, yeah, anyway... Uh, we, on our... I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Ohm. Uh, yeah. God Emperor Donnie Dumb. 
<laughs> Supreme King Young. Oops. Joseph Stalling, USSR. Adolf. Adolf Hitler, the damned. Okay, so there's clearly no injured whites here. Just FYI. So I don't know why the heck I wrote down injured white. Maybe I was trying plus to put the dodge there. I don't know. Whatever. Um, Saddam Hussein, the worst. Chairman Mrao. Drug Lord Rodrigo Duterte. Narrow enough said. Generalissimo Pulpo. Genghis cannot. You know, I feel like this is a little bit unfair to Genghis Khan, but uh let's let's not get into that sort of debate. Uh Vlad the Penetrator. These names are amazing. Uh so this is an eleven roster team. It has Three rerolls. It has one skeleton, both whites, both mummies, and three ghouls. Uh, it's also at 140, so. Yeah, no, that's right. It's a TV 1000. It started with exactly TV 1000. Which I wanted to check because I feel like it might have been better served with one less ghoul and two more linemen, but he could not have actually done that. He would have been. 10k short. So I guess in that case, you sort of may as well go for the extra ghoul. Hmm. Well, uh, oh, hmm. Yeah, I guess, okay. Well, let's, let's see. Let's, now that we've finished appreciating the, this great team with excellent names, uh, let's, let's think, talk a bit about how we think it should develop. Um, he's only played one game so far, and all of his SPP landed on his ghouls, which is pretty great. Uh, so his ghouls are going to be developed pretty quickly, I think. Usually with Undead, your ghouls will develop pretty well, pretty fast as well. Probably I'd like to see one of these turn into a sacker, one of them into a dedicated ball carrier. Uh, what do you even do with a third ghoul? I guess it's like a spare. But uh, whichever one is the ball carrier, I think that is the second one you should level up. You should do the sacker first. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that, but what it basically boils down to is once you have a dedicated ball carrier, they are much more likely to hog SPP. So if you delay developing that player, it is easier to spread out your SPP from touchdowns until, well, until you, until you spec them, really. Uh, it de this team definitely needs some dirty players and a bigger bench, but it's undead, so, you know, the bench will come naturally with time. Uh, and so will the dirty player, probably. Uh, I think what it needs most, though, is a whole lot of guard. Like, all of these guys probably want guard. And then once they have guard, it'll be, well, quite hard to penetrate them. Uh... <clears throat> Other that, other than that, uh, I mean, I like what I see so far. Not that there's much to see. I'm hoping I don't see super mummies, which seems pretty common with undead teams. Like they just roll a ton of doubles and stat ups on the freaking mummies every time. Uh, please don't do that. Please don't. I don't think I can take it. I mean, it would be great for you, but I just, I just don't think I can take it. <laughs> I've been traumatized one too many times. But, uh, okay. Okay. That, that sort of covers it. And, uh, okay. Well, you know what? That took, like, 50% longer than B did, but I'm still, like, under half, a, half an hour. This was a really short recap. But that's what happens when there's only one person and there's a lot of teams missing. Sorry, but I just can't banter very well with myself. Um, yeah. So, uh, let's, actually, I've just realized I forgot to look at games from next week. So, uh, let's go, let's go back here and do that. We can burn another five minutes, okay?
Uh, week three games. Let's see. What can I actually look at here? Uh, oh, I see one that I like. Home Wreckers versus Rage Dwarf, which I believe is Chaos Dwarf versus Dwarf. Uh, yes, it is. I think that will be a fun game to watch. And if not that one, certainly Kislev versus Goblins will be amazing. Uh, I think. Hmm. Where are the rage doors? There they are. Huh. This is a... You know what? I think this team will actually have a slight advantage against the... Uh, against the Cast Wars. Normally I think it's the other way around. Cast War the Cast Wars are favored in this matchup. But first of all, I think uh, regular Dwarves are a better TV 1000 team. But second of all, and critically here... Uh, this team just has more development. And that's sort of important. Like, they have the same amount of guard between them, but this one also has strength. So, and also has Dauntless, so it's not going to get outpowered. It has more armor than Hobgoblins, which... Hobgoblins are supposed to be cheap, so that's fine, but... I guess the other one does have a bench, so it has that going for it. But still, like... I think this slightly favors the Dwarf team rather than the Cast Dwarf. Although, if they were playing later in the season, that would not be the case. Uh, I'm not going to comment on who I think will this match favors. I just really want to watch it. <laughs> I think it'll be a fun game to watch. Okay, and uh, back to 9C. There's actually one last thing I forgot to mention from this game. Uh, so I'll do it now. And that is that the Dauntless Unicorns, that death, was a catcher. It's a dead catcher. So now they're playing catcherless, or at least minus one catcher. I think they still have one. But uh, let's look at the games for this week. Well, hmm. Actually, I don't think Halflings versus... Uh... I don't think Halflings versus Lizards is an especially good game. Halflings can't, at least not for watching, Halflings cannot hit everything, and, or, well, basically everything. They can't hit, hit much of anything against Lizards. Skinks, I guess, occasionally, but Skinks are twice as fast as Halflings, so not really. And... The Lizards themselves are sort of just relying to not 1 and 9. Could be a chaotic game, but I don't think it'll be a very... F I don't think it'll be a great viewing experience. Uh, on the other hand... I think talking about our new team, Dead Presidents versus Wood United, I think that sounds like a pretty fun game. The Wood United, of course, are uh, Luke's team. They've had a bit of a rough go so far, but they haven't lost too badly. And I don't think they've lost any players, critically. So they have a good chance of being able to just run circles around the undead. But I I like what the dead presidents did for their first game, and I definitely want to see more of what they do. Hmm. Let's see... I guess, I guess I may as well, no, I've, I've done this, I've, no, I've screwed it all up. What have I done? Okay. Wood United. Uh, yeah, they don't have a lot here. One War Dancer, the first one died. Uh, one Catcher, no Throwers, no Tree Man, not really the money for either. And one lineman has blocked. Yeah, I think advantage goes... I mean, elf bullshit is still a thing. But I think advantage clearly goes to the undead team in this matchup. But I think it'll be a fun match to watch. So, uh, yeah, those are my picks for this week. 
Uh, I am going to bow out here before I truly run out of things to say and just start babbling like an even more of an idiot. So uh, until then, this has been Chaos Blue representing Team Foul, bringing you your week two recap for Rel Div 9B and 9C. Have a good game! Or games. You know, just play well. Bye!